Hey there, in this video we're looking at the Cubase Rotary plugin, which emulates a rotary speaker. And you'll see rotary speakers in the form of Leslie cabinets for Hammonds, and of course guitarists have used rotary speakers and rotary effects for many, many years over the top of guitar tracks. A rotary speaker is a speaker that rotates around and around. Now we can change the speed using this setting here. So we can alternate between having it off, so not rotating, rotating slowly, and rotating quickly. Down the bottom, we can change the actual speed mode. So if this is set to the right, then we introduce modulating speed, or the modulating rotary. If this dial is moved all the way over to the right-hand side, we can control the actual speed using a MIDI controller. So something like a pitch bend, for example. So as you move the pitch bend up, the speed will get faster. As it's set to the left-hand side, we can now use these modulation settings in the actual main effect parameters. One of the most obvious parameters is the distortion, which is adding a very subtle distortion over the top of the sound, which is something that's fairly typical with Hammond organs. You'll quite often hear distortion introduced into a signal chain there. Now over here, we've got the controls for the horn and the bass. So quite often rotary speakers will have two rotating speakers, one for high end and one for low end. If we have a look through these parameters, we can set the speed for the slow setting and the fast setting. So as we move it up, that rotary is going to be rotating faster. So the idea of having a slow and a fast setting means that we can actually introduce the difference between the slow and fast using the accelerate button, and that will add some intensity and even dynamics into our track. So quite often when you're playing the Hammond, you'll use this setting in between slow and fast to build the track. And that might also be building as you're adding harmonics using draw bars in the actual Hammond instrument itself. That accelerate parameter is really one of the key parameters in this plugin and it's all about getting from the slow setting to the fast setting at the correct speed. This dial here is controlling the amplitude modulation which is basically modulating the volume of the actual plugin itself and here we can control the modulation frequency. Down in the lower section, the first parameter is the crossover point. So this is the frequency where the lower speaker and the high speaker actually meet. We can define the level of the lower rotary speaker. And of course, using this crossover means that everything under that frequency that we've selected will be affected by the lower parameter settings here in the bass section. These parameters are pretty much exactly the same as the parameters that we saw up in the horn section. So once again, it's just a matter of, I guess, tuning in between that slow and that fast and even the stop speed setting over on the left-hand side to try and get the balance right. Now, we've also got a microphone section. So we can control the phase, the angle at which the mic is actually facing the speakers. So over here on the left-hand side, we've got more of a mono signal. And as we move it over to the right-hand side, we've got two microphones on the cabinet. And we can also specify the distance from the microphones to the actual cabinet itself. We can also control the phase using this dial here. Let's have a listen to that organ sound on its own without the actual plug-in. So it sounds pretty cheesy. And as we kick the plug in back in, you can hear that it really starts to take on more of that sort of Hammond, Leslie combination. It's not just for the Hammond. I know a lot of electric guitarists who love playing through rotary speakers and also have rotary emulation pedals. So that option is there for you to use over the top of electric guitar. And of course, there's no rules. So try it over the top of whatever track you want. At the moment, I've got it over the top of this pad sound and it's kind of giving me that modulated chorusy type impact over the top of this track. Thanks for taking the time to stop by and check out this video. Please subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos like this. Like the video if you've learned something. And of course, leave us comments down below and tell us how you're using the Rotary plugin in Cubase. I'll catch you soon.